Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and here beside me I have two entry level crossovers from two mainstream brands here in America. To my left the Nissan Kicks which has received a recent update in its style and design and the brand new Toyota Corolla Cross crossover from Toyota. In this video, I'm going to do a quick walk around of both of these and see which one may end up in your driveway soon. All right, starting under the hood of both of these bad boys, entry level small crossovers from Nissan and Toyota. Starting here in the Nissan Kicks, we have a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated straight four making 122 horsepower. This is not a powerhouse, but it is built for fuel economy and will get over 30 mpg on the highway. Closing the hood here, you can truly see the design language that is inherent to Nissan. You get their V-Motion grille, uh, very plasticky up front here, but it is in line with the rest of the brand. Moving along to the side of it, you get black 17-inch wheels uh, on this SV trim. So. Uh, a lot of really good bits inside that we'll talk about later. You get a blacked out roof that contrasts so well with this dark red paint and kind of helps hide some of the size and proportions of this vehicle because it is a nicely sized small hatch. Speaking of the small hatch, you do get a manually operated rear hatch here with 60-40 split bench rear seats that do fold flat and allow you for some additional cargo space. But let's go take a look at that Corolla Cross. Under the hood of Toyota's brand new Corolla Cross, you get a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder making 169 horsepower. It is a little bit bigger engine for a little bit bigger vehicle and gets a little bit worse gas mileage than the Nissan Kicks, but still will get you over 30 mpg on the highway. Closing the hood, you can see this does get updated Toyota styling. It is very familiar, but also new at the same time. So you get kind of this inverted U-shaped grille that is very apparent on the Forerunner and the Sequoia and the Tundra, but a little less aggressive versus those other Toyota vehicles. Nice headlights up front here. Moving around to the side profile, you don't get a contrasting roof, but what you do get is this nice chrome strip that separates the roof from the rest of the body side and does a nice job. It is really a classy, handsome crossover for the segment. Moving back here to the back, you do get on this XLE trim a power operated hatch with a 60-40 split bench there as well. And you do get a sunshade in this one or cargo shade to hide things there. And underneath your floor, you do get a spare, no really additional storage there. But that's enough for the outside of these two. Let's hop inside and see what makes each one unique. Sitting in this 22 Nissan Kicks, I've got the Monroney right here. This is the top trim SR model, slated to come in at 25,980. So it is not a direct competitor uh, to that Corolla Cross, but it is the entry level crossover from Nissan. So we wanted to cover it. The engine start stop button is actually down here by the shifter, which is something I've noticed that the Nissan Corporation is doing a little bit more. But that turns on the vehicle, shows off the new Nissan logo on the 8-inch color touchscreen here with uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto built into it. It's a nice system, uh, rather easy to use. Takes a little while to uh, get up and going though, but uh, you get all your nice safety warnings here. And then moving over to the gauge cluster, you get an analog speedometer and you get a digital helper screen on the left with a digital tack. 
unfortunately for filming we've got the doors open uh, but that is over there you do have adaptive cruise control on this model which is nice to see at this entry level price point all the controls for that there your audio controls over here a gear selector down here it is an actual mechanically operated one not electronic it is mated to a cvt which we drove this vehicle last year if you want to check that video out not much has changed since then we will link that uh, up in the corner and in the notes below uh, not the worst cvt i've ever driven which um, is saying something inside this one you do get contrasting seats here i really like the two-tone aspect it's really fun and playful and then you get this bright orange stitching which uh, last year we drove an orange version and it worked a little bit better than it does here on this red one but it is still fun and interesting as well uh, I don't know if you can see here, but I actually have speakers in my headrest uh, that go with the upgraded Bose stereo system in this. So that is a fun feature as well. This would be a good starter vehicle for somebody going off to college uh, and even for somebody needing their first vehicle out on the road. Let's see what that back seat is like. Popping in to the back seat and sitting behind myself at 5'10", I've got plenty of room back here, but you can see from the passenger seat there is a lot of travel, so there, there will be some front to rear seat negotiations in this vehicle. It is in the subcompact class, so that makes sense, but overall seat comfort is very good. The pitch of the rear seat is not offensive. It, it would be comfortable for a long trip back here, and you do get two USB-A ports back here for just a little additional convenience uh, for your rear seat passengers. There is technically a third seat belt here for the middle. Uh, there is a large hump uh, in the center for the center tunnel, and this center seat is a little on the narrow side. I definitely would not want to ride back here for very long. Popping out and folding down the 60-40 split bench rear seat. Interesting that the 40% is here on the driver's side. So if you have a car seat in the passenger side like I do, uh, you are going to have this center section that does not have a fold down armrest in the upright position and only have this 40% open access. Moving along to the very back, just to show you, with that rear seat folded down, there is not a flat load floor in this, so there is a bump up for the seats, just for you to know uh, when loading this up. But you can see there are rear anchor points all the way across for child seats back there in the back row. Let's go take, out, take a look at that Corolla Cross now and see how it compares. Sitting in the front seat of the Corolla Cross, this one is the XLE trim, so it is a little bit higher uh, in market than that Nissan that we sat in. So not completely apples to apples, but again, entry level crossover from Toyota here. This one comes in at 32,693 as this one sits. This one is also all wheel drive, which uh, that Nissan was front wheel drive. So some additional benefits here in this one as well engine start stop button is right up here on the dash which brings this to life you get a nice animation here uh, showing the silhouette of the vehicle you get analog uh, tack on the left and analog fuel and engine temperature on the right and then a large screen in the middle with uh, driver assistance tech and a digital speed readout in the center you get typical Toyota touchscreen controls. Uh, this is their old interface, so uh, just know that going in. If you are familiar with Toyota infotainment systems, you'll be quite familiar with this. It does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which can be accessed through a USB-A port right here. Uh, this does have two position heated front seats, which is very nice, and dual zone climate up front as well. A lot of comfort and convenience features. Speaking of convenience, a Qi wireless charging pad up here for phones. Um, well, it's a little on the large side, and uh, let's see. Does it charge my phone? We'll worry about that later. You do get a mechanically 
actuated gear selector for the transmission in this one, electronic parking brake with a hold function for driving around town. Center console's a little on the small side, but that's to be expected in this small class. But all told, very comfortable interior. Uh, you get your adaptive cruise and your lane keep, all your Toyota Safety Sense uh, features up here accessed on the steering wheel as well. But let's move to the back and see how the back seat sits. All right, sitting in the back seat of the Corolla Cross, very soft and cushy seats very comfortable uh, very impressed on this as well this is my first time sitting in here so uh, kudos on that you do get cup holders in both of the doors also like that feature quite well and it does look like you do get a fold down center armrest with two more cup holders so you can definitely have a lot of drinks back here in the back row of the Corolla Cross you do have this aftermarket tablet holder or that can be ordered from Toyota. So I guess not entirely aftermarket, but uh, a tablet holder for rear seat entertainment. So while it doesn't have anything built in, uh, in car, you do get this option here so you can bring your tablet along with you. Speaking of kids, this does have removable plastic inserts for the lower anchor points. So you will need to keep up with these if you do have a child seat in place because you will want to uh, put those back in place when the child seat is not there. It is a 60-40 split bench seat, so you can fold that down. And I also want to call out right here, you do get rear climate controls, but it does not look like, oh, no, you do. Way down here, you get some USB ports. So nice connectivity back there for the rear seat occupants. I'm going to fold down this rear seat. Again, 60-40 split bench that uh, folds relatively flat. Let's open up the hatch and see what it looks like from there. So again, power operated hatch on this Corolla Cross, relatively fold flat. There is a little bit of a bump up, but there is a nice little hard uh, piece of plastic covered in carpet uh, to cover that gap. So goldfish crumbs or whatever do not fall down in, in there. All told, a very competent crossover from Toyota and a great entry to the Toyota brand. Final thoughts on these two entry-level crossovers from Nissan and Toyota. They are both about what you would expect for an entry-level vehicle. They aren't just overflowing with tech and comfort and convenience features. But they do have a few surprises, heated seats, uh, dual zone climate, and the like. If you want to get into either one of these brands and are itching for a crossover, these are the ones to shop. Whether uh, you are more maybe fun and playful or a young family, I think you will find something to like on both of these. But as for me in my life stage right now, I'm probably leaning more towards this Toyota Corolla Cross. Stay tuned to this channel. Be sure and subscribe because I'm going to try and get this one here uh, for a week on my home turf. Hopefully get to test it out a little bit more, do child seat uh, fitting and the like. As for us here at GT Garage Talk, uh, we plan to have a lot of fun here at this event here at Texas Motor Speedway. So until next time, bye.